All right, welcome to the chat room. My name is Tomani Angel Sichinda, and today on the program, we have Lucius Banda. He is famously known for his music, and also, he's been in the politician industry for a long time. And not only that, but he's also a business pad personnel. And in the studio today, we have Lucius Banda. Please welcome the one known, Lucius Banda. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Great, great. Good to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Lucius, I want to go first from Famously. Thank you for coming to the show. You're and welcome. Uh, you're famously known for your music in Malawi. Yeah. And not only that, but you're also a big organizer in Malawi. Yes. I've heard you've done a couple of shows in Malawi yourself. <laughs> yes, a lot. All right, so let's start with the music. When did you know that um, you, you're a singer? Well, uh, I was very young. Uh, my brother Paul was the one who started everything in me. Mm-hmm. He actually was just a born musician. I didn't understand it. I was six, seven years old. And I was just wondering that whenever I'm trying to go play football with my friends, Paul would stop me from going there and say, come here. And then he would ask me to be giving him a tempo as I was playing his guitars. Mm-hmm. So I didn't understand it. I didn't actually like it because as a kid, I wanted to join my fellow kids in whatever they were doing, but okay. Paul always took me out of the rest and then slowly when I got to age 13 is when he started teaching me how to play keyboard. Mm-hmm. So that was 1983 when I was 13. I believe you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I was never born by the head, but hey, I was in the future. In the future. Yes, so I started learning the keyboard first it tried me with a guitar but no it, what was fashionable then was a keyboard it was like a new instrument guitars we had known about guitars but everybody wanted to know what a keyboard was all about so my enthusiasm was on the keyboard and i learned by age 15 uh, i went on stage for the first time just playing the keyboard how was that for that's that's what i want to hear the first time you were on stage was at the age of 13. I can imagine when I was asked to sing the first time, I'm like, fight him. I was like, you do this. And I just went melt. But then you're talking of the age of 15, going into a big stage. Was it a big stage? Was it a small stage? How was that like for you? Well, we, Hallelujah Band then was just playing at Balaka Parish. It wasn't commercial yet. It wasn't going places. It was just Balaka Parish. It was a wedding of some guy. You know, we kept at a Catholic parish. Mm-hmm. So the chef, for the priest was marrying that day. So they ordered us to perform for him. What I remember very well about the day was that I, I had already no pair of shoes. Okay. You know, you know I, I, I got my first pair of shoes when I was 16. Are you serious? Yeah. That's, that's, that's amazing. So I, re- you I remember it was difficult because uh, I don't know, there's a misconnection. What sometimes when you're playing these instruments and there's some loose connection somewhere, you end up getting the shock. I persistently got some shock, so someone had to give me a, a cardboard to put so I could step on, so the shock wouldn't hit on me. So it was a cardboard shoe. <laughs> yeah. That's but the, very funny. That's yeah, very funny. because of that, I, I managed to get my first pair of shoe. Did you take them off though? I feel like I can just be like, <laughs> own it. <laughs> We're gonna wear these forever. I didn't want them actually to to to. I couldn't believe I'll get another pair. So I I in Chijawa I can say kusini, right? Mm-hmm. I had to make sure if I'm traveling a long distance, I you do know. without a shoe. I wear when I'm arriving. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you? So that everybody can see. And I save I save my shoe from actually wearing out because it was the only one I had, you know. Okay, into politics. Um, I um, rumor states. Mm-hmm. Well, I did my research very well that you you actually did politics as as we ran you stood for MP if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's in Zomba district. No, Balaka, uh, Balaka. 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 Yes. So let's 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 get let's get in, a bit into that. How did you transact from music and and getting into politics? Well, since I started my music, my direction was more of activism than just music that people talk about, love you, baby, and stuff like that. I never liked that stuff. Okay. I, I it's just recently when I had now God, I set, settled center. in the industry and then wanted to sing something different. Okay. Yeah, so it's my interest on the current affairs, issues happening to people, especially the disadvantaged people, mm-hmm. uh, that made me 
get interested in politics. Mm -hmm. And at some point I felt like maybe if I were to join politics, maybe I would do better. So it was in 2003, oh, 2004, when I joined Main Street Politics by becoming a member of parliament. I ran for MP uh, in Balaka North and won and saved there due to some circumstances. I got kicked out, got kicked prison. Kicked out? Yes. Right there. Why did you get kicked out? Well, it was a very intense time politically. We were fighting because as a party that uh, had ushered the president into office, we were dumped. So we were fighting that president. Um, and of course, in my case, he fought me back. Uh, it was something to do with my credentials, my certificates and stuff like that. I got arrested, uh, got to court, got convicted, or sentenced to about 21 months in with Adleba. Did you get into prison? Yes, I did. How, how is prison like? I, I hear it's, it's a dark room and, and there's nothing there and there's no space to breathe and it's just a very horror place. That's not true. How is it like? True. Because I, th I feel like when people talk about prison, they talk about this empty space, like there's just you, the walls, and, and the alarms, and, and no sunshine, and stuff like that. When they talk about prison, that's a picture they paint, it's a picture they present. But when you're in prison, it's a home, you can stay there. That's why men are there. It's a home. Yeah. Are you are you asking me to get in trouble now? Are you asking no, me? what I'm trying to say is it's a situation in which you've been thrown to. Mm -hmm. So if you're sharp and smart, you say, This is where I'm gonna be. So okay. I must make this place habitable. If I'm gonna be regretting every day, you know me, I believe in moving on. Yeah. Uh, when you're in a situation and you're denying it, it becomes painful. Okay. But when I got in prison, I looked at hundreds of young men in there and I said, I come from the ghetto. My mother's house didn't have a floor. Mm -hmm. In Ario Zira. And the roof was not iron sheets. It was Uzu Zinyara. There are times that I could sleep and see the moon right through the roof. You cannot even think about electricity, you know? We're using nyari, jibobo, not even a candle. Candle is very fancy. <laughs> okay. you know? So I'm thrown fancy into a <laughs> So I'm, well, I'm thrown into a place where there's a floor is cement and there's, 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 there's iron sheets there, there's lights, you just press your lights for what? It's a hotel. So it was okay. okay. That's how I took it. Okay. Yeah. And 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 rushing into the most before we rush into the most painful place in your life let's talk about how you felt when you first had your first money into the music industry performance and everybody did believe in you and now you're getting into the first jack the black jack right there well i honestly i i don't know maybe because i lived with the uh, missionaries okay priests so my approach to money is very, very abnormal and different. When I did my first album, mm -hmm. it made a lot of money. Okay. But I remember I was living with Paul and I told him I didn't need the money. Wow. And I told him to take the money and see what he can use it with. I only took, I think was it 300 kwacha or, I bought a Walkman. Mm -hmm. Then we used to have Walkman, where you put a cassette and then you had, uh, you had the head, headphones. Mm -hmm. play, playing music. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I needed then because I was not married. I was living with Paul. I didn't see why I should have money. Okay. In my life, I never want money. I only need money, you know. So that whole album went to Paul. When I was releasing the second album, I had now gotten engaged uh, in a woman uh, and I was married. So yeah, we started getting money slowly. I think by the end of the 1995, I had made my first one million kwacha, you know? And it was a lot of money because I remember buying, a, I remember buying a car at 90,000. 
Really? This was a vehicle bought in Japan. I think we should go back into those towns because these towns are not fair. They, they, they don't come back. <laughs> they don't compromise. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> they don't compromise. Yeah. Okay, um, Lucius, into, into 2021 and 2022, uh, rumors stated that you died and, and, and you could not revive. Mm. There was even rumor that you were not alive at the moment. Mm. And I've, I feel like in 2021, you went through the most painful uh, 2021 for you because you suffered from a very intensive sickness. How, how, how's that been on you and, and your family? Uh, it's, it's, it's honestly, 2021 was the worst year of my life mm -hmm. because, um, well, I've fallen sick before and gotten up, but 2021 was a long illness. I would say the whole year was lost. Yeah. So you can imagine for an active person who's a breadwinner, not just for the family, but for a whole tribe of mine, to be actually spending time in bed was very painful. But I had faith that I woke up, I'll be okay, because I, I do have a lot of faith in God. Mm -hmm. And I believe in a just God. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in a God who you work for very well and then he gives you a punishment. No. So I was so sure that I woke up. There were stories several times. I passed on, he's died. And I think those stories made me believe that really the devil is really there. And they sit down and plan that we'll kill him today. And they start announcing without knowing that they want to make it. Because most of the days that the, the story would go around that Lucius has died, where the days when sickness intensified and I was not feeling well. Wow. So when I started thinking that, ah, well, how could this be connecting? I think there really are people who actually pray to, to, to devil and that such such a person should die and they think it's a done deal and they start announcing without knowing what me and my God we are doing and it won't end up in the way they, they want it. Okay, I saw a lot of artists came through for you not just the ones that you know yes. but uh, I remember the Lulus of, of, of this yes. time had arranged a very big event to just make sure that they get to help you in, a, in every way that they could help. Yeah. How did you feel to see that the new generation the people that you've trained oriented and have looked up to you are now coming back with the same energy yes. that you have and saying let's go and get this man well it felt so great. It really, I, I felt like a parent who's raised his children very well mm -hmm. and he needs them and they come back, they come forth. Honestly, I, I'd never be able to thank my colleagues in the music industry, the Lulus. I can't be mentioning because it's like the whole yeah, lot of them. Yeah, whole lot of them. I whole lot of them. I remember Lulu because it was like in the forefront. Yes, Lulu, Lulu championed this course and they brought us a lot of money that mm -hmm. has been assisting us in the, the hospital bills. There are a lot of bands. I remember Great Angels yeah. Choir. They came, the whole lot of them, to sing for me. I don't forget that moment. They sang my favorite song, and because I loved the song, I was crying. Then people were blaming them to have made me cry. Okay. Yeah, so there are a lot of people, actually not just musicians, but all walks of life people came, came. That's I, so amazing. I don't take it for granted, and I thank Malawians from the bottom of my heart. That they really came through for you. Did you. I have a, I have a very very amazing question. Um, I remember you did a song with Janta. Says uh, some people want you to die. Yeah. But then that, that's not God's plan. Did you do that song during the time you were in in a hospital or yep. before you actually got into a hospital? Because I feel like that's one song that you would look back to and be like, look. It's not God, it's not people's plan. This has to be God. Apparently, it's very surprising because that song was not written by me. The Are chorus, you the cho that song was written by Janta. Wow. I, was, I was only invited to write my verse, and my verse was going a different direction altogether because my verse was in the Chinese words. He went to Nwanga, Chome Sindina Kupangire. Somewhere, somehow, it was the politics in my my constituency you that you guys you, <laughs> that you guys you chose Barabbas instead of me, Jesus. <laughs> but then the chorus, honestly, that was Janta Are you serious? And it was done in 2020. Wow, yeah. big ups to Janta because that song. For me, looking back at your illness and, and, and reviving, 
is is the exact song. Yeah, it became prophetic. It's Honestly, exact. I'm not the type that would write such a song if we, I came out of a sickness. I wouldn't have time to talk about people. So I'll you just think it was being sarcastic, like Dante, you were being sarcastic. Yeah, <laughs> uh, then I could sing it, but not after going through the sickness. I, because honestly, in my view, mm -hmm. if someone wanted me dead, there must be very few narrow-minded people. Majority yeah. of people on, on this earth wished me well. Yeah, we do, we yeah. do. We sure, do. sure, sure. But then I feel like um, it's, it's amazing how you still get up and still make it to shores. You know, it's not easy to actually just stand on a crowd and, and people screaming your name all the time and you're not still well but you're still giving people what they're asking for. How does that make you feel? And your family, to be precise. Firstly, people must know that I, when I go on stage, mm -hmm. I go there while feeling sick, while in pain. There are times, actually, I have to call for a chair to sit. And even when I sit, I have a problem. You notice that I've been changing styles of sitting because when I sit yeah. for a long time, my lower back starts paining me. But I am in government. I'm in a position in government. I'm an advisor to the president. People's expectation is that when people get to those positions, mm -hmm. then they're bathing in money. But well, me, you make it look like it. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, there are people who did that. Okay, yeah. And they believe that's a standard for everyone. Mm -hmm. But God being my witness, I would never take even a penny that doesn't belong to me. Wow. And so if you work for government, you're more or less a civil servant. And the salary is minimal. Mm -hmm. The benefits are very small. It's different from private sector. Mm -hmm. So you have to work. So I go to my little farm. I grow, This year I planted soya and groundnuts. When it's on weekend, I go for a show to get money to make a living. Mm -hmm. And that's not, it's not even show business, not just for fun. It's to make money to be able to pay my, my, my bills. But the real thing is I want to pass this message to people that when we want to change governments, the intention is to create a nice environment for us to strive in the disciplines that we do. Mm -hmm. Not that all of us will stop everything and sit and wait for government to be throwing money to be receiving. I am not made of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, before we go, what, what advice would you give to a little Lucius coming up and just want to be a Lucius? How, how do they start? Like, you know, with music, I can tell with young people, it's very difficult to just get your, your record level done or to actually get your first level with there and to even have a collab with you, even me just sitting with you right now, I'm getting goosebumps, even if I'm not showing you because I'm like a professional. <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's me getting goosebumps because you are a legend, you've been in the industry for a long time. And, and, and this is a little Lucius trying to come up, trying to get it easy, trying to get it fast. How do you advise such a young person? Well, the different dimensions one has to take. I combined too many things, and I was okay. doing so many things at the same time. Mm -hmm. One, I was an activist. In activism, the issues of prison reforms, that I was a member of a panel reform, I was a member of Amnesty International for some time. When I was doing those songs, that song was sponsored by Amnesty International. Yes, for me, to see that. we were fighting against the, the death penalty. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to be entertaining. You don't just have to be radical and just talking issues, which to some kind, to some point can be boring to other people because people like fun. People like love stories and I love you, baby. Everybody loves love, love stories. Yes. I love love stories. <laughs> so, so as a musician, I had to balance up. So okay. I would advise anyone coming into the music industry maybe to take one route and concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. Because in our time, it was possible for you to touch that, touch this, touch this. But now, the criticisms are, they, I don't know, the criticizers, I don't know how to put them. Criticism is more higher. It's more higher than before. Yeah. You know, our music is judged. I hate being judged as far as art is concerned. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be put in a competition. That's why anyone who tells us there's a competition, I say, please spare me, I don't do such. <laughs> because you cannot compete art. Art is unique and different 
from one person to another person. You cannot put them in a competition. Yeah, how do you put a, a, somebody in a competition? Like you say, putting in a competition is a very weird thing because you have your own genre of music. Exactly. Luku has his own genre of music. Exactly. The Black missionaries have their own genre of music. And now if you're looking at comparing each sector, would not work well because Lulu can be you, you can be Lulu. Very unfair. It's like you take a, a chameleon and, uh, and, and a lizard, you put them in a competition. Chameleon naturally walks slowly. Eh? Mm. Lizard is always running. So you put the two in a competition. It's wrong. It's like putting a fish and a mouse in the same competition. The other one lives in water. The other one lives in, in, in horse. It's different. So that's how it is. So I've always advocated against people comparing. And I see it happening a lot on pages and on Facebook. And I, I, I really feel how bad it is to an artist. Okay, how do you take the, the negativity that people bring to you? Like, not everybody loves everybody, and mm. not everybody hates everybody. But mm. when people mean to just say nothing, how do you react to that? Well, when people bring me negativity, I take it back to them. Believe you me, that is my... <laughs> do you basic. go back on the page and be like, you are not talking to me like that? Exactly. They write a, a stupid comment, I write a stupid answer. That is the order and it can't be changed. <clears throat> wow, wow. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that um, there's, there's something new that you're coming up with, if, if I'm not wrong, or you're still just trying to get recovery. No, I'm working all the time. There's a new song, actually. I did a, a promo yesterday that is coming in three days. On Tuesday, wow. I'll be releasing a song. It's a very unique song because it, the style of it, I've taken back. I've taken myself back to the heydays. To the old, to the yeah, old, it's old, old balaka reggae. Wow. So people that have listened to it are, are really very happy about it. It really sounds like an original me. All right. I hear you're a producer. How many, what type of music, instruments do you play? Or you just bring in people to just do it? And then you just get to edit it? Well, my instrument has been a keyboard. It's what I learned when I was 13 years old. But um, I concentrated more to be more of a music writer songwriters, producer, someone who can actually arrange everything in the music. But when I have to compose, definitely I go on my keyboard and play. I don't play keyboard to a professional level anymore that I can play in a band. Mm -hmm. Nah, I've chosen to do so many things at the same time, like I said, so mm -hmm. I won't have time to go train how to play the piano. I just use the knowledge I have to make songs with, and I am able to direct someone that, no, 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 you guys are missing. Wow, yes, yeah. I wish I could play. I can sing though, but I can't play. You can. I can't play, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you are, you're still not giving up and I pray and wish you well. Thank and you. We, we're praying to see you get well and, and, and just get back to your normal self and see you dance on stages and, and to millions of other people waiting to see you dance. Dancing, I doubt. I don't think we'll, we'll dance anymore because even without sickness, my focus is now just communicating. My music is basically so you just basically conversa sit. it's conversation with people. So no, but you have some good songs that I can dance to. Like. You can, yeah. <laughs> I know I have a few that I can I can literally just go back to and dance to the ones you've done with the the KOKs. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, see, no, the ones just, you've done with with Namajingo. Yeah, we so, try to move yeah. with time. We try to move with time. Yeah, but yeah. Like you're saying, we are men of the past living in the present, maybe stepping Here into the there. future. Yeah. Here and there, we're going to get to that. All right, Lucius, thank you so much for coming through. And before we go, what would you like to say to your fans? Yeah, I would like to use this opportunity to encourage uh, people that the world today is going through a lot of problems. Mm. There's a lot of things, wars, uh, COVID-19, escalation of prices of uh, common goods that are used at home. But my, my plea is that any problem has a solution as long as you are alive. You should not take your life. Uh, if there was someone who was the right candidate to take their life, it was me. Because I've been embarrassed, being sent to prison, being announced that this guy stole some qualifications and I still lived. I've lived with very poor parents when I was young. I still lived. I have been sick, announced dead several times, but I still insisted on living. And until today, I still go to the hospital for dialysis. If that I miss twice, I can die. But I still work on my life. 
So I find you very unfair when you decide to kill yourself because you're not born for yourself. You're born for all of us. Peace. Alrighty, thank you so much. And for now, we're about to say goodbye. It's the chat room. I am so glad that we had the very one and only, the legend himself, Lucius Vanda. But for now, till next time, it's your host, Timani Angel Sichinga. It's goodbye for now. <laughs>